Bantayan Island is a storied place not just for its tourist spots, but also for its culture and heritage as well. I'm Chai Fonacher. And I'm Rich Gonzalez, and we're here in Bantayan Island to check out the Holy Week festivities. Welcome back to Paradise Philippines. The edge of Bantayan's Holy Week here is that aside from the gigantic carroza, no, we also have these life-size images um, and also the pre-Spanish era images that was uh, aired from their from their you know from their four grandfathers, uh, their four grandparents, and also it actually helps the family to gather together so that whenever or every year they work hand in hand and that actually compose solidarity. Yeah. The church itself, the, 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 structure. the structure itself, yeah. tell us about that. Um, for the structure, uh, the one that we can see right now is actually a result of uh, those raids. You know, you can see thick walls and a uh, very high ceiling. It's actually built that way for security reasons that that becomes the refuge of the people. As what I've mentioned earlier, um, prior to this structure, there was a f uh, three structures that was burned several times. So every time the Moros comes in, they burn the church and then they do it again and again. So for them not to be able to burn this, that's when the structure came out. Father Dorotheo Andrada del Rosario um, had administered the structuring of this uh, church now with thick walls so that it won't be burned easily. Second, once the Moros will come in, um, the, the, the people will be safe here, so they evacuate here. And on top of this church, he also administered the building of the different kota or camps here in Bantayan. So we have the, the, the two are still up in Kuta Park in Coda Park in Majadejos, and the other one is behind the Coda Beach in Santa Fe. In Santa Fe. Yeah. Behind me, as you can see, is the interior of St. Peter and Paul Church here in Bantayan proper. The ceiling was actually painted by a group of artists who are coming from Leyte, Cebu, and Bantayan as well. And this crew was called the Buho Kisame Crew. And this group was led by Aris Pastor, who happens to be a friend of mine. Ridge and I and the team are on our way to see one of the families who are sponsoring one of the carros. Yeah, and these families have been doing it for generations. Since pag so good yun dili sa bantayan o old procession, and uh, let's start yun yung karo kay um, one sa ako uh, usa sa akong uncle siya yun ang nag nagbuhat aning mga mga ribolto uh, kasagaran sa sa uh, mga ribolto din nga procession ang isa ang akong uncle nga nag nag kuan so morning siya scope ko ang uncle niya siya ang nag, nag nagbuhat aning kuan uh, among mga ribolto Nami division of labor. Ang uban na akong gagaw sila sa sa karo mag, mag decorate. Family lang yun ang ang kuha na namo. So every year pud maglain-lain pud ang inyong design ani sa high. Yes, oh. Kay na may kaning katong usapon nako ka ka igagaw. Ah, uh, siya uh, mag siyang mag mag decorate mo design sa ako. Pero ang ang karo is still mao ren siya amo. Naray usay ikuan uh, iusab e, 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 
right behind me is one of the Corosas that's going to be featured in the parade later tonight. And we have the pleasure of getting to know and speak with um, the decorators of this particular Corosa. So let's get to know more about this particular one right now. Unsa ni siya makaro? Unsa yung gi represent? Saan kanang asanto intero? Kanang naana siya sa ang lubganan gani? Aha. How long does it usually take to decorate? Ing aning a size ng karo? This seems very big. Two two days. Two days. Yeah. Oh my God. Karon ko an lang ni siya kay ang according to the ITF ang di ko anda yun yung decoration sa karo is. Sa upper portion lang, ang kanisya din hindi lang usa kay maumay ko anong sa mga tao, kuhaon baka nang magkagubot na ba ang yan. Kuhaon ba itag distancing diri, pag tradisyon nga ba diri sa bantay niya, na magbutang uong kuhaon ka ng something na ilang pahigdaan, something nga ka ng mga panyo, mga gapas, mga anak ko na ilang kuhaon niya, magamit sa nila kung kuhaon ko na ay magkasakit ng mga anak ba. Kanisya, maodyo ni siya ay kuhaon ka ng santong tiyero nga, Donated by Mrs. Villacampa, donated here sa Kwan, sa church. Mao na nga, tungod sa pandemic, ang ilang karo dito sa Picas, wa pa man maayo, mao na nga, ang gigamit lang usa diri nga Santo Inchero, kaning na adiri sa simbahan nga. Kani siya nga Santo Inchero, mao sa nigamiton para veneration tonight. How long have you been participating in decorating the karo? First na ako pag-decorate ang Santo Inchero katudyong karaan, kung ano man ko i-request ko, kaya katong mag-decorate yun sa flowers nila, murang nagkasakit or na-appointment niya, wa may mo-decorate sa flowers niya. Ako i-agawin ko, ikaw lang usaog kuan ka nang nag-decorate mo itong nikuang ko niyo. Sige, bantay ha, na alag mong panaway na. Mga ito nga pagkuha niya, o kung mao man di, ikaw mo decorate mo itong nga, Ang tutsangtod, ako na ilang gikuha nga mo, yung mo-decorate sa ilang karo. Nya, sila, igo na lang sila mo-support. Ano ba? As you can see behind me, that is one of the karosas. So the church is well underway um, with preparing for the procession. We're here at the bell tower at St. Peter and Paul Parish, and right below us is the procession. It's literally just started a few minutes ago, so we have an incredible view of the procession, so let's go see. Every year, a spectacle of processions are held all over Bantayan Island to celebrate Holy Week. Life-sized images are paraded around in extravagantly decorated corosas, filled with flowers and lavish lighting to tell the story of Jesus Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. The biggest processions in Bantayan Island are held in St. Peter and Paul's Parish Church in the heart of Bantayan City. The first procession occurs on Holy Wednesday, and each carosa depicts the story of Jesus Christ's journey to Mount Calvary where he was crucified. The second procession occurs on Good Friday, and this depicts the time of Jesus Christ's death after his crucifixion. After the main procession that usually begins at 5 p.m. and ends at 8 p.m., there is another procession that occurs one to two hours after. This procession is called the Soledad. In this procession, we follow the image of the Mater Dolorosa, also known as Our Lady of Solitude, as she grieves the death of her son Jesus Christ. The procession begins from the church around 9 p.m. 
During the procession, there are seven stations depicting the seven sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary. At every station, after each meditation and short prayer, a cantor sings to Mary to console her in her grief. Many people join this procession to accompany the Blessed Mary as she laments the death of her son. After the Soledad procession, the image of the Mater de la Rosa is brought back to the church and placed near the image of the dead Jesus Christ while the faithful keep vigil. It was an honor to witness the Holy Week processions held in St. Peter and Paul's Parish Church. The Corosas were absolutely beautiful. You could see the amount of time and love that was given to decorating each and every single one of them. Whether you are a religious person of the Roman Catholic faith or not, being a part of the Holy Week festivities in Bentine Island is truly an experience like no other. We hope that you enjoyed this video as much as we did creating it. For more content like this, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time you guys, see you in paradise. Thank you.